Hey everybody, Adam Savage in my cave alongside Norm Chan. And Adam, we have a fun and potentially challenging build project today. This is, OnePlus has asked us to make a display of their new phone. The OnePlus 12, which just was announced today. Yep, and here is here it is. And they want us to take it apart and embed it in resin, like a trophy display showing all of its internal parts, which is, can I just say right up front, it is awesome when a client comes to you with an idea you love instantly. Like, hats off to OnePlus. That is a great idea. It's something that I think we would do kind of anyway. Yeah, yeah. We um, would love the idea. Disassembled, exploded diagram of exactly, electronics. Exactly. I love, look, I love peeling aside the curtain and seeing the insides of things. There's one extra wrinkle to this. Which is? Well, they would love it if the screen, which we'll have detached from the rest of the internals, might still work. While encased in resin. While encased in resin. What are we? Are we I, magicians? I I'm like a little bit, yeah, that's an intense one. Okay, because I've taken apart phones before, but to get a phone, at least a display, yeah. working while it's disassembled, I haven't tried that before. It's not a deal breaker, so we're gonna work towards that and hope that we achieve that goal. Oh, I see a lot of cool, I mean, we gotta do resin pouring, yep. figure out the display. Well, first of all, disassemble. The that's phone. the first part is disassembling, and disassembling phones is often involves many different tools, many different techniques. There's the phone, okay. So a bunch of cameras on the back. Uh, you know, it's their new flagship phone. Um, Two, three, four, is that five cameras I see practically, or? A light, yeah. A light, three cameras, and a camera on the front. The front facing okay. camera as well, of course, USB-C. Uh, I'm so curious, I haven't taken a modern phone apart in a long time. You you guys did that a lot back yes, in the day. Yeah, yeah, so, so I'm curious. We've got some of the, we've got screen pullers, we've got spudgers. Um, but first off, the intel we have from them is that this glass back is held on with a gasket that melts at like 200 degrees Fahrenheit, 170, yep. something like that. So we gotta go warm this up, loosen up the adhesive, and remove the back. I have heated my lab oven up, so Let's put it in the lab oven for five minutes and see how it goes. All right. <laughs> I, I have never put a phone in the oven before. This is a first. I love having a lab oven. All right, our phone is done. <laughs> <laughs> you baked the phone. It really feels like a cooking show. So apparently a little alcohol around the perimeter to soften. Yep. I don't think we need a ton here. No, I'm just, uh, if the gasket in here is soft, I wanna see if I can just get any movement. Yeah, so something we noticed is that the glass, or the back is glass, yes. but it's a matte finish. So normally where we'd be using a suction. And nothing to sticks off, to no, it. Our suction actually is not sticking to it. So your solution here is to apply a larger piece of surface area of, of tape. That is airtight and like locally sticky. Like mm -hmm. it won't, I don't know. I'm, I, I, it's a theory. We'll see if I'm right or wrong. Oh yeah, the back is coming up. Okay. Dude, we yeah. got the back coming up. We so got. So this is where we're gonna be careful. Yep, yep, and yep. Try to get it all in one piece and not pry too much. Wow. Oh wow, look at the adhesive, right there. Right, okay, let's... so yeah, there we go. Oh. I don't want to yeah, over torque yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Oh. Come on, baby. Come on, there we go. That's it. Oh. Why am I moving so fast? <laughs> oh, that's a nice satisfying pop. No connections. Uh, I'm, I'm, frankly, I'm impressed with us that we I'm got so the pleased. glass back <laughs> off of this thing. It was also a testament to how amazing glass has become in the past 10 years, yeah. 15 years. I mean, so the back is off and we can already see how tightly some of these electronics oh, yeah. are packed in. I, a large part of this volume is from all smartphones, right? It's going to be the batteries. So yeah, I that is see this that, big yeah. chunk right here. And on top of the battery. Oh, yeah, so look at that. the coil. That's a charged coil. That is the charging coil. So which is one of the reasons you have to have this glass back. Right, so right. So that uh, you so, can yeah. have that 
charging uh, when you lay the phone down on a charge pad. Fast so, charging, that's a new feature on this phone. That's clearly the, one of the first things that comes off. It looks like the cameras. It looks, I see a bunch of screws. All right, so we, oh wait, let's first of all see if it operates with the back off. Let's. Okay, here we go. Hey! hey. <laughs> it had already been on, that is fantastic. <laughs> oh, that's great. I feel like that's something we're gonna have to do a bunch. Every minute along this build because yeah. we don't know what parts in here are dependent on the other parts to operate. Yes. And it may have all sorts of shutdown protocols if a camera's not connected or if the... Okay, let me go get some fine screwdrivers. I'm gonna keep all the screws together even though we're not gonna be putting this phone back together Oh in no, this but they're form. part of the display. I think, yeah, we absolutely should keep the screws. Can I tell you how much I love these plastic razor blades? Dude, they are, you know, all I need is one that is guaranteed to be the consistency of a fingernail, and then I think I don't need another pry bar for the rest of my life. <laughs> look at that. Wow, look how thin that is. Dude, that's crazy. That's, um... And that's all a, that's needed. It's I mean, it's... it's tenth of a millimeter. Right, and it's, it's copper wound up. Yeah. This is the first thing that we're actually disconnecting, potentially. Yep. an antenna cable, okay. perhaps. Wraps oh, around baby. the Look edge of the phone. Wow. Okay. That comes up. Now, now I guess my question is, what about this guy here? It's like a, a shield plate. Cool. Part, How's that? Part number two. Okay. I mean, examine, what is this? It's a speaker? Yes. Speaker. That's the little speaker gasket here. Let's see if it turns on. Let's see where we are with the phone turning on. Yeah. Okay. Why not? Why not? Yeah, yeah. Phone turns on. Still operating. You've unplugged the cable and replugged the cable. <laughs> a very robust system they built here. Um, here you go. I'm going to move this over here for you. And is that a, a that's that's the light? Look, LED light yep. as well. So there are some connections yep. where it's literally contacts. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of contacts between this board and here. Um, let's see if the phone still turns on. And it does. <laughs> this is amazing. I I really thought that we'd be failing at every junction. Uh, yeah. I think at this point, let's disconnect the battery. Let's turn the phone turn off yeah, and disconnect the battery. battery. So uh, it's volume up. Volume up and power. All right. Oh, there it goes. There we go. So Slide down. Power off. Fantastic. Right. So battery. We'll give it a second. There it goes. Okay. We're done. Now it says here, pull up the battery. I mean, for anyone who's gonna want to maybe replace their battery down the line, this all seems very doable so far. It really does. I'm really quite impressed. Wow, Ooh. wow. I cannot believe that worked. <laughs> now I'm gonna pull off those battery pull tabs. And that is our power supply right there. Oh. And the contact a little more sophisticated than two contact points, but yep, yep. very small. Wow, these flex cables. <laughs> you I wanna mean, talk about yeah. just thick enough, big enough to carry a signal and that is it. Here comes one. Whoa! So this is uh, this entire camera module. That's amazing. It's modular, it's yeah. almost. Like they, they are gonna manufacture this and then plug it right into that connection. Plus it's got its own QR code, so they're doing live tracking of all the parts throughout mm -hmm. the whole manufacturing process, which the form, is really neat. The form factor here is novel, because this is a telephoto lens. Like all, right, so it's a, is that a periscope? It's a periscope, oh, yeah. That's so what keeps that low profile. Amazing. Very cool. Yeah. Um, I got a question for you, Adam. Yeah. At this point, do you want, you to, want to try, try firing it up? <laughs> yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. Okay, because you so, know camera systems. I feel like if those break, the phone maybe should still yes. turn on. Um, okay, so I'm going to pop in this, the battery. Yep. And, and I feel like see uh, its connector. The other cable that we had not tested. Well, let's try it without that. All right. Without both of these cables. There we go. Uh, battery connected. Mm -hmm. There we go. So the whole daughter board. Minus that display, yeah, we think. Yeah, nothing down here is connected except for this cable, which we think might be to this way. So holding down. Come on, baby. 
Wow! Oh my gosh. <laughs> there's no way to charge this phone right now. The, the, the USB, there's oh, no right. input. Oh right, we it, have eliminated. <laughs> the speaker, so everything funny. down here is disconnected. That's amazing. You can't take pictures with it. It doesn't connect to Wi-Fi, but it still turns on. Mm -hmm. Oh, that whole thing just pop off? Everything just came off. Oh, oh nice. and I disconnect. That's the front-facing camera. There is the front-facing camera. Another camera module. All right. Amazing. This, this is the this is the brains. Like this is. That's the right. Because look, that's that's um, uh, thermal paste. Right, right, right. right. That's and, the heat transfer. Mm -hmm, that's definitely the the processor All is right. in here. Yeah. Okay, so I believe if I short across these two pads, that will be the on switch. Okay, here we go. Ready? Here goes nothing. Oh, Adam, Adam, Adam. Dude! <laughs> so wait a second. We have, we have potential operation with nothing but the battery, this board, all of this stuff is out. And the screen still works. Dude, this is, this is like, <laughs> this is amazing. Okay. So at this point, I think we have the phone in the component in the. I can pull a couple of units from up here. I think like that thing. Mm -hmm. But I think we have the phone dismantled into the majority of the parts that will be dismantled into. Yeah, that we want to display. That we want right, to show. Right, off. right, right. The new um, camera systems, the wireless charging, the okay. display, uh, and the important thing for us is this cable. Right. Because if, if we want this operating, that cable has to go down in the casting. Yes, I can't imagine that we're going to have the battery and the motherboard and the processor working inside resin. No. Uh, what we'll do is we'll have to have a second phone. In the base that we connect this to and exactly. that phone can drive all the things. That's our magic trick. Great. I like that. And then it is just the screen. You're looking at the back of it. You're looking mm -hmm. at, yeah. Um, and we'll tidy up, but what is this, like three, four inches it's almost? not a ton, but yeah, I yeah. mean, we do this and it's sitting on a base, the phone is, I, I'm feeling okay about that. So I think what I'd like to do then is, uh, it's time to start to figure out how big our mold's gonna be. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, really time to turn this off. Lay out the Lay it out how it's going to be, I with say, screws and everything. Let's diagram out yeah. right. um, so, what we think um, the display's gonna look like. I like this layout. I've kept the cameras localized together. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can't really do this so that every part is close to where it actually belongs on the phone, but I feel like this gives, and we're exposing the back to the front, but this is the front, and I think the back will be equally as interesting. Oh, okay, I get it now. So this is suspended in like a couple inch, maybe two inch thick of At the most, clear yes, resin. Exactly. Uh, in this form factor. Right. Um, With about this border, right? So right. It's, it's about a half an inch all the way around coming in. Um, and then about that on top, a little bit below the surface here. I, I see here's, that's and then the important part. That is, I'd have this tail coming out. And then we work out the base based on how we connect that tail mm -hmm. to the phone that will drive the screen. And that's the thing, while you're laying this out, we are disassemble a second phone, yep. and that's how we execute the magic trick, the motherboard and battery, the only basically two things we yeah. need, that's what this gets connected to. It's totally amazing. Um, I'd like to also dismantle a phone today and cast just its screen to do a test pour. This stuff has a pot life of two hours, which means somewhere around 70 to 90 minutes it's gonna get gummy. That's when we're gonna learn when we can start to place objects on the first half of the pour. Um, I've got my fan going upstairs, so dust is down. We should spray, uh, we should spritz a little bit of um, just water out of a mm -hmm. spritz bottle around to sort of settle the dust in this room. 
uh, and do a test pour with one screen and a tail coming out so that we can just see if the screen is embedded in resin, do we get... Uh, right, right. 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 Is, are there electronics here that get inhibited mm -hmm. when it's encased? Exactly. And also, it's going to give us a real good sense of, for this Crystal Clear 204, yeah. what that working time is. Here is the extents of our clear resin. And then the phone would sit in here, surrounded by all its bits, mm -hmm. and all the way around. And then its tail comes down and comes out here, and that connects to the phone at the bottom. And then the base, I'm thinking is just some piece of black material. Um, hollowed out. Hollowed out and bottom. big enough big enough to fit the phone in here. The components. Right? The driver phone. Yeah, exactly. And we can put an on switch, you know. USB, we'll probably want to reconnect that. That's how we'll actually right. drive it because we can't access the touch screen <laughs> no. when it's in there. Right. Yeah, so you'll need that USB board connected um, on the daughter board there so that I can plug in like a USB mouse Amazing. and keyboard. For right, 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 and you'll be able to, okay. Tap into the Oxygen OS. Yeah, so if this comes up like this. So that would be the bottom, and then that would be the true bottom. And that gives me some stuff a to glue to, to, to hold yeah. on to inside the, the base. You're thinking like a wooden base? Or? I'm actually thinking my, my, my rich light. Oh, okay, something you can machine into. I can machine into it, it's structural, it's black, it's beautiful, it, mm -hmm. like it'll never mar. I, I hate having to paint something. But it makes so much sense I'm seeing now that the pour has to happen yeah. while it's laid out. Yes. I have a question, yeah. I haven't worked with this crystal clear yet, yeah. what is the mold gonna be constructed out of? The mold's gonna be constructed out of acrylic. Mm. Um, that gives us perfectly flat surfaces that are uh, really smooth. So it saves us polishing on the other end. Okay. Uh, although there will be a polishing pass, the acrylic should do a lot of our work for us. Um, this stuff works with a standard smooth on universal mode release, which I happen to have a dozen cans of. Um, it feels and like again, our next we're going to learn from our test pour today That's exactly how well it'll come out. And we're going to assemble that mold using just hot glue. It's the fastest way to be able to see every corner where there could be air coming out. All right, sounds like our next up, make that test mold with yep. our backup screen. Yes. So yeah, that's gonna sit. Oh wow, that's a pretty high elevation, but yeah. Well, because we're well. gonna pour it. I want a thick pour for this test, because yeah. I, I wanna really see the exact case scenario, you know? Right, right, right. So I'm gonna, yeah, I think we're better off with this over on this side. Yeah, there we go. Um, and then, cool. So I'm going to, I think, be able to just put this down right away. Mm -hmm. So for people building their own acrylic molds here, what are the things they need to be concerned about? Like how airtight, watertight does this construction need to be? Well, the, it has to be completely airtight. The cost of failure in a mold like this is total. You can look at it really close and you can see where you might have a weakness. And then you can go in and sort of fix that weakness. So there's two passes to making a mold like this. The first pass is assembly, and then the second pass is really just double checking and making sure that you are as clean as you can be. So the assembly is just, you know, you're laying it down on the big planes, letting it dry, and then you go through and inspect and you add all the hot glue you need when you do. Yeah. And even if the edges of your cut acrylic aren't perfectly flush, there's some cleanup we can do Completely, when absolutely, cast, yeah. Just cleaning up all that. Yeah, that you've extra. got a corner that you've got to like, you know, make a little bit neater, but that's yeah. the flashing. Yeah. yeah, I do think there is some post polishing that will be necessary. Everybody messes up one of these molds once. Or of operations. Yeah. So, with this formulation of the crystal clear, it's a not one-to-one -one part mixture. It's 90 to 100, right? That's right. Uh, it's 10 I, to 9. I have the spec sheet. Yes, 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 in mass. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, by weight, sorry. Yeah, mix ratio, 100 part A, 90 part B. Okay, so 868 for the 100, clear 868, 
times 0.9 equals 781. 781. For part B. And number A, number B. Is yep, that correct? That's correct. Number B. I said number <laughs> B, yes. Our first, right, so the first amount we pour, well, this mm -hmm. should, actually, we might not, that might be, we might need more volume. Wow. For the final, yeah. Yeah. For our, for our mixture. Come on. Three ninety seven. Three ninety seven. All right, here we go. I'm at three ninety five. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Good. Three ninety eight. Uh, so we stir, then we evacuate. That's right. Then we then we pour. then we pour. Yep. All right. Yep. So stir for about two minutes or so. Yes. Yep. Script the edges. The working time for this crystal clear formulation is about two hours. Yeah. So it's an exothermic reaction, so that is highly dependent on how thick you have it. Mm. It'll kick in probably thirty minutes inside this cup because there's such a concentration mm -hmm. of it. Um, one of my standard rules that my mentor taught me was as long as you do 30 stirs, you're probably at the bare minimum of what's necessary. Uh, like 30 times you move your you move your thing, one, two, three, like that. But I just keep on scraping, scraping the insides edges, yeah. until I see no, no artifacts, you know? So tossing that, I'm gonna put this in here for evacuation. Yep. Very reluctant to give up its air. I know. So unlike normal uh, casting resin, which bobbles up. Uh, oh, there it goes. Here it comes. It's not nearly expanding as much in volume. There we go. We'll just make sure it's not gonna overflow the extents of the cup, and we'll let it sit there and think about what it wants to do for a while. Okay. I think we're ready. I think we're about 15 minutes into the working time, but you know, yep. we can. I'm gonna release the vacuum slowly. You gotta release the vacuum slowly because you're gonna have debris in there. And if you do it fast, it's just gonna send it all into the resin. And before we do our full pour, I'll clean that out so we eliminated the possibility. What's lovely is the moment it's done, it just lifts right off. There we go. Ooh, it's look. already warm. Yeah, it started the exotherm. Yeah. But. So, here we go. This is when we start to watch it run out. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just want to be really clear that like, I read on this, I read up on this all night last night in the last couple of days, but I have not done this type of clear resin pour before. Um, to friends have tested, Evan and Kate have done a bunch recently and I, I looked at some of their videos for some guidance on the pitfalls. There's a few other YouTube, oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh is it leaking out? Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. You gotta slap it on like yep. in the infomercial. Exactly. Butyl, one of the more important modeling materials. My God, it was such an important material in Mythbusters. All right, so now, 335. Yeah, we're about 20 minutes into the working time. We're, we have some left over here, so we can- This is great, this. and we can keep an eye on its viscosity here. Yeah, yeah. And that, that actually tells us uh, roughly, you know, about our overage in terms of the specific gravity of water versus this stuff. Mm. I think I was able to run that off at the pass. I feel confident that that can stick around for a couple of hours. And because there's actually more surface area here, it's gonna kick faster in the cup than here, so we can use it. Possibly, yeah, I'm, I'm curious about that. But yes, we will, we'll be able to see when we can start, when we can put in our foam. Um, that's really lovely. It's lost a little bit of clearance, but you know what? I think it works perfectly. Oh yeah, I'm not that concerned yeah. about that. <laughs> All right. 
It's a whole other day. <laughs> it's a whole other day. It's the next morning, and it's finally solid. A couple of things. One is the um, the leak continued mm. a tiny bit, and if you touch this, you can see it is actually not fully cured yet. Oh my! It's still wow. Yeah, it's and it's hard. Yeah, but not yeah. You can actually still mold it here. And we're like. 15, 16 hours yeah. after our pour, more than that, 18 hours or so. We poured it at yeah. three o'clock yesterday, yeah. 3.15. Um, the two hour working time. The, it, what it is is it's, um, if you look in here, you can see there are some artifacts of the liquid moving mm -hmm. and that, so what's happening when it sets is there's a thermal reaction that builds polymer chains. And you can see in here, you can see visually some of those polymer chains and you can't hear. That's because I was moving this around at like the three hour mark. And that's why it tells you the working time is two hours. Cause that's how long you have to work with it before it starts to show artifacts of your messing with it. Yeah. yeah. So there's also a dip in the corners here, which oh. it dropped down to about 40 degrees here last night, 40, 45. I feel like that's a temperature differential. So what I'm gonna do today, well, but for the big pour, I wanna put my pressure chamber with a space heater near okay. it. So the ambient heat is the same for the whole cure time. Yeah, yeah. About probably 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like an ideal casting temperature. We'll pour the second half of this and that, the question I wanna answer with that is, how do I put in some little tiny screws and not have them flow all over the place? My plan is to take some of the, we just mixed some and degassed a mm -hmm. batch. I want to pour in a really thin layer, like eighth of an inch thick, and start putting this in there and start putting some screws in and get them positioned where I only have to do it in a little bit of depth and then pour the rest from like a corner and it. see if it keeps, I, I don't know if pouring is going to mess up the whole arrangement. That's the experiment. I'm terrified. <laughs> you need gloves? Or you no, I don't feel like I need gloves right now simply because right. I'm just... We're gonna do a. I want a total coverage of the first, of the of the layer. And be mindful of the hole. Oh right, there it is. You just made it because yep. we'll need to wire yeah. this cable out without it that end touching oh, any right. of the resin. Okay. Okay, hold that, I'm gonna get scissors. Okay, here we go. All right. Hang on. Oh, wow. All right. I think wrap, bundling that up would be prudent. It's, yes, it's I tape, totally even. agree. Okay, so I'm going to go this towards the bottom here. So now I want to see about placing the tiny, tiny screws, and I'm going to put a bunch up here. How did it feel placing that screen in? Did you that felt really good, and, and I felt a little resistance. What's really nice is that the screen is perfectly lozenge shaped yeah. in order to not capture any tiny bubbles. Okay, so there is room to move, and we have two hours of working time. So this is, while boring, mm -hmm. certainly doable. This is where, when choosing between 20 minutes or two hours of working yeah, time. Here, go ahead and drop that. Great. In the resin. We're going to need that to place all oh my the God, little pieces. Yes. So, wow. yeah, I know. All right, yeah, go ahead and drop. And I think... With each of these, I want to, yeah. Okay, go ahead and drop. Okay, so I moved this and it moved all the screws oh, forward. Oh, wow. So again, just noted about how, mm -hmm. how this has to happen. Right, Does so. it change the order of operations? Maybe screws last? It might, yeah. I think the screws definitely are last. That's definitely true. You're nulling in resin. I'm nulling in resin, baby! Okay, so I'm gonna try pouring in here. Okay. Oh, just to weigh it down? Mm-hmm. And also because I want those bubbles to form early. And we will check in. Yeah. In an hour, see if anything's shifted. We yep. have two hours basically to move things around without getting those strands in there. Yeah, we have a lot of time for that.
Yeah, I'm going to put this cover back over here yeah. and tape it, and we'll just put this over in the corner yeah. and monitor it for a couple of days. <laughs> I'm building the final mold, and I'm really making sure, taking pains to have no fingerprints on this. All right, I think I'm ready to mix and to pour. 405 grams. There she blows. 450. All right. Oh, look, I got that depth exactly right. I wanted about three quarters, half an inch. I'm just gonna let that think about itself for a few minutes, and then I'll come back and make sure there's no bubbles. And how tight should you make them? Actually, to be fair, the size of the handle is often designed to dictate how much force you can apply. It's like, how many foot-pounds should you apply? Well. Hopefully the designers have actually figured out and made the handle the size it needs to be so the average human could apply that many foot pounds. Okay, here we go. Now we wait. basis of things. Uh, while my resin is setting, I've got some time. This has got a lot of time. Um, while it's setting, before I do the second pour, uh, it's time to worry about the base of this display unit. And bases can be a weird nightmare because when you're making something that's for display, it's base it's something that nobody pays attention to, but only if you get it right and make it perfect. It's very weird. No one looks at the base and thinks, oh, how did that go? But if you get something wrong, you're like, oh, that's a problem. So uh, painting is often how you can screw up a good base. You make it out of wood and then you paint it and the wood dries differently and the paint soaks in in different ways and then you've got to clear coat it and you get crazy or you get bubbles and like, Bases are this weird place where the stakes seem low, but in fact, they're weirdly high. All this is the longest way of saying, uh, last year I obtained what I think is the most ideal base material for anything, and it's rich light. This is an industrial um, material built originally as lab table material. It is a resin infused paper, uh, uh, layers and layers of paper infused with resin, sort of like a micarta. Um, it's dense, it is structural, so you can actually build structural things out of it, unlike many uh, machining materials like this. Um, it's expensive, but as you can see, it already comes in this beautiful warm black and you can finish it to a nice sort of uh, a satin smooth finish, it can be beautiful. So this will be the base of my phone display. Um, it is going to be 12 inches long by three and a half inches wide because it has to fit another phone in its base to drive the screen of the phone we'll have in the clear. Uh, it also has to fit all the electronics, um, the power supply, the switch uh, for turning it on and off, etc. So I'm going to slice this down and then slice it down on the table saw and then I'm gonna chuck it into the mill and do a lot of hogging out. Yeah, here we go.
better. It is the next morning. Another morning. Um, last night at the end of the day, we had some difficulties that we did not cover on camera. <laughs> I, I just want to cover them because we were about to we were about to leave the casting overnight and pour it again this morning when Norm remembered to ask me if I had put mold release on the mold and I had not, ladies and gentlemen, on our final mold. That was the clutch question because that was the last possible second we could have gotten this done in the timeline we have. I felt so bad asking you the question because nope. I saw the next hour. We had another mold built and poured and it's perfect in 25 minutes. Yeah. Uh, and I've been doing a little bit of separating of the old mold with the mold release. And I just like when I hit this, if this separates, I'll feel very good. All right. Ah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Clean, pristine, still polishable. Uh, and this is, you know, this is our test casting. Yeah. So you know, yep. the yep. screen is receded more than we need, but this is the proof of concept. Okay, so um, you want to bring over that motherboard? Yes. This is our test disassembly. Oh my God. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to, that's the screen. Mm -hmm. And here comes the, ba I think that actually the best way to do the battery is just like this. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, battery's in. And now it is, um, it's shorting two contacts, right? Mm -hmm. Do we have, here you go. Wait, but where are they? I believe they are on oh. um, the other side. Yes, they are. You are right, they are. Okay, hold on, hold on. Here we go, three, two, Jordan. A moment of truth. Play it. I think you hold it longer than you think. Think about how long we depress the power button on a phone. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <gasps> what? Uh -huh. It worked! <laughs> I was really thinking that was the last ditch. It's not going to work. We're going to have to. <gasps> this is wild. Dude, I did not think that was going to work. I really thought that was not going to fly. It is running. Okay, so now we want to see if we can fire this up with the other motherboard. This is to determine whether there's a hardware handshake for this guy. Right, right, because we have our phone disassembled, but none of the hardware suspended in the resin is actually running the screen. That's going to be from a different donor phone. Adam, 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 it's working! I am really happy. Relieved. Um, relieved. Relieved, one, that the casting has worked. That means that our second pour will go. Super relieved that the screen works. I did not, I was not positive that was going to be a hundred percenter. And look how good it looks. Yeah, it really does look gorgeous. We'll do us some polishing on that, um, but I am super, super happy. So I think your next step is the actual, yeah. the laying out of this in our, our cured resin. Uh, that means that um, we're going to mix up a full batch of resin, but not pour it right away because yes. I'm going to spend like an hour positioning this in a thin mm. layer of that resin and then we'll pour the rest, do the final positioning all right here and then put it in the pressure pot. I'll hold my breath the entire time.
All right. Uh, so, we've successfully cast the phone into clear resin. Uh, the battery puffed up a little bit, but that's fine. The puffery only happened on the back side. The front side looks really great. Uh, it needs a bunch of sanding. I'm gonna have to start with, uh, I think, a 400 grit and go up to 1,000, and then some Novus polishes, but I believe, well, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. The next thing for me to do is to free the cable. This is right now the most important cable in my life. I wanna free that and I wanna test this screen. And once I've tested this screen and it works, then I'm gonna get down to protecting that cable and polishing this up, getting it in the stand so we can power it up. But first, let's make sure I haven't broken this cable. There we are. We're free and the cable's not broken. Got it! It's working! Dude. <laughs> okay. This is gonna be non-trivial to fit this into here. So I get this much cable, it's about an inch and a half, and in order to make the driver work, I'll need to be able to twist this 90 degrees and it looks like I will be able to. But um, the port that receives this in here will have to have a hole in the bottom that this comes through and then twists so I can attach the rest of it. But that all seems quite doable at this point. All right, that went really, really well. The 320 grit pulled all the topographical muckery off. It removes material off of this uh, crystal clear 204 really, really well. Um, I brought this to a thousand grit. You can see that it's already starting to show its best qualities. I'm very pleased. Uh, and I'm about to hit this with some Novus polish. Uh, and that, really should be the thing that makes the whole thing pop. Uh, it's a three-step system, so the first one is heavy, second one is fine, and the third one is clean and shine. So here we go. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna be gooping that on there. <laughs> oh, I can already see it starting to sing. Oh, this is so cool. I know, I have that Proxon polisher that could have done this, the one I did the, 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 the helmet of the Lost in Space helmet, but I can't find it anywhere. It's nowhere in this building as far as I can tell. So I'm gonna do all this polishing by hand. happy with that. I'm so happy. 
Uh, I threw a resistor in there to mm -hmm. lower the brightness of the chip on board LED strip. Yep. Very happy with how that came out. And here comes the phone external switch. Turning on this phone, here we go. Boo! Dude. This, this cable here is not connected no, to anything. No, it's just a programming cable. <laughs> we can play, we can charge through that. The, this is a, literally, I can take out the lights here and this here is a self-contained phone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at the drawing and Adam, it, it looks just like the drawing. Oh my God, it's exact. Nothing makes me happier than that. We, we this, this is like, yeah, yeah that is uh, in every way the, uh, except I put these on the back instead of on the front. Um, but Such a fun project. So many unknowns going into this. We didn't know, you know, one, if we could disassemble and have it, how many components we yep. need to plug in, have it operate. Yep. Uh, doing it test casting, we learned so much working with the resin for the first time. And, and let's be clear, it is a particular producing problem to solve um, about how to make something and be done with it in time for the client's needs. This was almost a rush for us in terms of the technologies we didn't know about, the problems we had to solve along the way, and I it's not like we squeaked across the wire. I'm really happy with how it came out, but uh, it involved, like you said, a, a bunch of learning. Oh my God. And it beautifully displays as yes. a sculpture, all the components of the OnePlus 12. I mean, oh. got the wireless charging pad, the cameras, the three cameras right Four there. Cameras. Four cameras, front facing cameras yep, as well. Yep. We got the haptic module. We got oh. the, yeah, that coil. It's just, it's been a real education, um, taking apart these phones, mucking about with them, mm -hmm. tinker toying them, and then uh, executing this display. Awesome. Uh, I want to thank OnePlus for giving us this opportunity yeah. for doing this project. And with more information, if you want to learn more about the OnePlus 12 in the description below. Thank you guys for joining us for this. I, I learned a lot. It's like watching a magic trick unfold. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Thanks for joining us, guys. See ya.